if you're anything like me, you would have seen the first trailer for Loki series and you would have lost your goddamn mind. Or, if you're also like me, you would have avoided it at all costs because even the vision of Tom Hiddleston back as Loki made you feel the sort of tightness in your chest, a feeling in your throat, a weird tickle at the back of the neck. Oh shit. Or are you normal? Probably not if you're watching this video. Today we are going to walk through how I made the Loki series suit from the trailer. I'm hoping that this is mainly accurate. There are not a lot of visual references for me to go by, so it's all a little bit, you know, helter-skelter at some points. You can skip forward to this time if you don't want to listen to me rant. Not rant, but talk. So I did not like this outfit. Done. I kind of really dislike it. Just on a design point of view for Loki, I don't like him wearing it. However, that is not to say that I dislike the costume designer and why they put him in a suit. The designer in question is Christine Wada, who has designed things like Zombieland and Altered Carbon. And hats off to her, that was quite a big thing to do considering it's such a design shift from the previous movies. But you know what? I can't hate anything more than I hated the costumes for Ragnarok, so. Right, let's get this cracking. Let's talk about what I did first. I was very lucky to have found a jacket online in the UK that was very similar to what he's wearing and it only did a little bit of alteration. I started by stripping the jacket from its lining and adding in some shoulder pads like it's the 1980s again to give a more masculine shoulder. I've got quite small shoulders, Tom has big shoulders, bada bing bada boom. I then reattach the facing back to the jacket to create a lapel. I tend to like to, oh I look really bleached out. Yeah I am aren't I, wow. The lighting keeps shifting in this room, so. And then it's a case of sewing in the facing. I'm using a ladder stitch to achieve a machine finished look. If you use a slip stitch, you will see the thread coming in and out of the fabric, but a ladder stitch kind of hides within the folds and just, you know, hides your intentions. Like some 18th century evil young man. What are your intentions with my daughter, sir? I should also apologise, I didn't film the removing of the sleeves and just tightening up the shoulder seam a little bit more. I hate doing sleeves so much you do not understand. As a result, I kind of refuse to film it. If you want to find another YouTuber who will show you how to insert sleeves, I'd really recommend going to them rather than the disaster that is me. Next, I could put the lining back in and again sew it down by hand because that's where I'm at in my life. The sleeve lining was sewn at the wrist, this is a wrist not an ankle, separately so it's not attached to the actual upper sleeve. That way they can both move independently and one won't get caught on the other. Well the first thing of note is the fact that I have not washed my hair because cosplay life right? But I'm by myself in my house no one's gonna see me apart from you delightful people. So I probably should have washed my hair. Oh well, I'm just trash. As this stinky stinky trash man is pointing out now, we're gonna need to start thinking about the vinyl attachments to put onto the jacket. And that means measuring this distance between the two shoulders and how far down you want it on the back. This will depend on how big or small you are and also your own personal ideas of placement. I mean, you can see it in the video where it should be on Tom, but everyone's torso looks different. So pick and choose, you get it. No lies. Despite cosplaying the God of Lies, well, God of Chaos. God of Mischief, God, God of Magic. <laughs> okay, I need to stop. I kind of thought I could do this. I thought, you know what? You've done art GCSE, you've done an art A level, Go for it, you can do it, don't worry. I couldn't do it. I was gonna try to draw the template for the letters out myself, but I realized that I live in the 21st century, that I could find a font very similar to the Loki font on the jacket, 
print that out at the right size and use that as a template instead. Instead, I could have just not spent an hour of my life trying to draw this like an absolute buffoon. But then again, I've never really made rational choices when it comes to my cosplay. I've got the print out now and I had to add on the beginning of the V and the end of the T just because it didn't fit on the piece of paper and I didn't want to waste two extra pieces of paper. Ooh, 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 mm, rude. I've got some heat transfer vinyl. I then taped on the template and cut the template while also being on the vinyl. I'm just gonna say this right now because once again, I have done goofed up. When you are drawing something out, make sure that you're drawing it the right way because I ended up writing my N's and my R's the wrong way round, like they were in mirror image, because I didn't do that correctly and I flipped the template by accident and got an, uh, a back to front letter. And because I'm so dyslexic, my brain didn't tell me about it until I was ready to iron it on. And my brain was like, no, this is, this is cool. You used to write letters backwards throughout your childhood. This is obviously correct. And then, you know, me about to put the iron down, like, oh, no, 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 no very wrong. Now I'm using an iron on top of some marble to stick it onto the fabric. Another point of order. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Gavel. Know your fabric that you are ironing onto. I'm ironing onto straight plastic, meaning that over a certain point, it will melt. And here I am doing some math, which I then very quickly decided to completely ignore for doing whatever the hell I wanted to. I bought some snaps off the evil corporation that's named after a rainforest. I attached them to the jacket. I stamped in these stamps according to the stampology instructions. I find doing this on a hard surface, or in my case, a bit of log, really works very well. The circle vinyl of the badge had already been ironed onto the jacket, but because I was going to be using a pen to draw the design, and considering the design is really difficult to see, and I couldn't find any shots that were clear, I knew I was winging it, which meant I wanted to draw with pencil a proposed design, basically just to give myself a bit of practice. You always need practice. And also to flesh out ideas, how I want to do it, Da, 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 bada bing, bada boom. And then it was a case of very, very faintly drawing the design onto the vinyl, which is a matte finished vinyl. It wouldn't really work with a shiny one, a glossy one. After doing that, I held my breath and went in with various Sharpies to draw the design. And let me tell you, I'm not happy with it. You can see that it's Sharpie. But what I'm thinking I might do is I might use black silk thread and embroider over the design so it becomes a statement piece of textile. But I didn't have time to do that, so I didn't. And I'm just telling you what I would like to do now, so maybe you won't make the same mistakes that I did. Moving on to the shirt. I usually, in non plague years try to get the majority of my cosplay stuff from a charity shop. I like reusing and recycling and I'm not the biggest fan of buying fast fashion anymore. So this project was a bit of a deviation from me. This blue shirt is actually from Moss in the UK. Luckily they sell very small sizes for a very small bean like myself. The shirt at first, looking at the trailer, I thought it was just a shirt. But if you look really closely, it's like his lapels go down to his armpits. They're like one big thing. I was not about to make an entire new shirt to make big ass lapels. You know, this, I like, I like, I love Loki. I don't like this costume that much. How much effort am I going to put in? So instead what I did is I decided to use a pin tuck, which is a very, very thin, you turn it over, you sew it, and then you, you're left with like a little flap on the outside of the fabric. And I decided to do that along the line of where the collar naturally fell. Like it has a bit of definition. I got two tiny little buttons from my stash and sewed them onto the collar, but didn't sew them down into the shirt because I thought it might, that might be a little bit too much. 
Luckily at this point I'm using a fabric which can be steamed and pressed and that makes me all the happier. The tie in itself was very easy. I bought myself a wool tie from, again, the evil shop. The tie in the trailer is a square bottom tie so I had to tuck up the triangle at the bottom and hand sew it into place to create a nice stumpy end. I've got my reference photo and I've got various types of paint and what I did was I actually used acrylic and I mixed up two different shades, a very dark black I'm not choking up about paint and a very light brown beige greyish sort of color and then all I had to do was apply masking tape to where the stripes would not be paint the stripes wait for it to dry pull the tape off and bada bing bada boom I had a tie I did once again draw myself a template on my art sketchbook just to make life a little bit easier for me the belt buckle now I was very specific about the belt buckle. In the imagery, it looks like it has a raised surface, but there was no way under God's green earth that I was going to do that. I was not gonna make it. So instead what I did was I bought a snap buckle from the evil shop. I basically made a blueprint on top of masking tape, which I could then lay on top of the buckle, which I spray painted gold and draw around it with black acrylic paint. When you lift off the masking tape it leaves a sort of shadow behind and it was simplistic but I wanted it to be easy because I didn't really care. Once again I am drawing out a blueprint but this time I'm going to use it god damn it. The daggers. The daggers in the trailer they don't show enough bloody footage of them. It, I had to guess, I had to guess and what I do when I'm drawing anything that's weaponry is I make a grid out of whatever increments I want to make it out of and I draw on top of that. Here I've got the drawing. I did use a real bread knife to kind of see what it felt like in my hand and what size the pommel should be and the blade and all that good, all that good stuff. I want to take this moment to talk about something that's really, you know, close to my heart. I'm a trash goblin and my basement, which is also my workroom, is currently in its spring iteration, meaning that I've got grow lights down there, I've got trash down there that needs to go to the dump, I've got plants that are gonna go into the garden during the summertime, it's a chaotic mess. But forgive me, it's just how I am, and you know, it's a basement. It's not supposed to be like Versailles. For the blades themselves, I'm making them out of five millimeter plywood. If you can find a five millimeter hardwood, I'd highly recommend because working with plywood is the devil because it will tear out very easily. But because I was gonna be doing a lot of this project via sewing, sewing, yeah, sewing, sanding, I went with it. And it's what I had on hand. I didn't want to buy new materials, so plywood it is. Basically to transfer the diagram over, you can take some spray paint and just spray on top of the template and that will leave a lovely little mark for you to work off. I used some clamps to kind of make sure the wood wouldn't move around a lot and I started sewing. So, sewing? Why do I keep saying sawing? My favourite saw is a Japanese double bladed saw. It's really good, it's useful for small projects like this. What I'm going to say here right now, very important, is that you wear safety equipment. Right now as I'm sawing I have my mask on which is for dust like sand and dusting so it can protect your lungs it's very easy to think you're fine and then to do damage to yourself later in life please don't do that not on my watch uh uh no i care for you guys i don't want you to be hurt after which i had the bulk of material cut out i could then turn to sanding it down to its final shape i have a variety of files and rasps to do this including some curvy ones queer ones i don't know Again, glasses, mask. Just start sanding, put it in a vise, chung chung chung, create a lot of dust. And the same goes with the blade, but this time instead of 
going up and down with the sanding, I'm doing it with a bevel to create the uh, beveled edges of a blade. I find that if you're going to be painting wood, the best thing to do is actually give the blade a few coats of wood glue. This will smooth out the surface as well as harden the soft wood, which will help you later on, but you have to give it time to dry between coats. Moving on to the dagger safety guards. What, what do you call them? The guard? I'm having a breakdown, can't remember. I'm using walnut. So I've once again spray painted the pattern on top and I'm now going over it with my pencil just to make things a little bit easier. And once again, we're back to just sawing out the big chunky bits. The blade handles could then be cut out, sanded and glued to the inside blade wood, as well as creating two blocks for the handles. And I glued it all together like a nice big sandwich and let it dry overnight. Following what I did with the blade, I'm then gonna use my files and rasps to knock down the amount of wood left and get it parallel to the inner wood blade. Now that this is a nice 2D shape, I can start shaping it. And I did this with a rasp and that is kind of hard to explain. I just started shaping it like you would clay or something until the right shape appeared. Smoothing out all the edges, doing a bit of nice sanding. I can tell you one thing, your arms look great after doing this. I also have some very small files which I use to help me with the detail work on the wood itself. Then I use some pre-made wood filler to fill in any little gaps or holes or anything where it went wrong basically. Let that dry, sanded that down. The blades could then be primed and I'm using a wood primer and I'm using quite a few coats of this with sanding and wet sanding in between. Then I needed to mask off the blade. Shading, a part of a project which I love because it just makes everything look cooler. I like to shade with oil paint because it doesn't dry fast. It creates a very nice oily texture and it just looks good. And what I do is I take some black on a brush. I dry brush it into the dark spots and the crevices and all the nasty jointy little bits. And then I wipe it all off again, which is, you know, fun. And I do wear gloves for this because oil paint goes everywhere. It is honestly the worst, TM. But the nice thing about oil paint shading is that once you spray a sealant on top of it, and maybe two coats of that and just leave it the heck alone. The oil paint goes through a sort of process where it's no longer wet and it can't transfer through. Just make sure you properly seal it. Now we could take off the masking tape of the blades, put a kind of a barrier between the blade and the handle and start spray painting. I started off with a gunmetal metallic spray paint which gives a very kind of matte finish, even though it's metallic. But a little, little trick I wanna tell you guys about. If you have a very bright silver and you want to create a sort of shine within the metal of a blade, you can take some kitchen paper, maybe some like steel wool, would do a great like te texture. You spray some of that spray paint onto the paper. You can dab it and then dab it onto the blade. And that creates this kind of odd rippling effect and it just it looks cool and it makes the blade look a bit different after that my work here is done i finished making the blades and i brought them upstairs and then the next job was to get into my low-key cosplay makeup and wig and get into the costume and take some photos chin chin bitches
I'm a disaster of a walking human being. To you guys who are still watching my stupid face, thank you so much for joining me in this. I really loved making this cosplay and I really loved filming it so I can then share it with you guys and share the, the hype and the passion and the, the insanity of the Loki fandom with you guys and you guys will hopefully share it with me. I can't wait to talk to some of you guys in the comments about Loki because he is still my obsession. If you have any more ideas about what you'd like me to talk about next or to show you how to do, you know, I kind of breezed through a lot of the techniques I used in this video just to get it all out there. But I'm always up for suggestions and you never know, I might fulfill some of them. After all, I am a benevolent god. That's all for today. I hope you have a fantastic week ahead, life, eternity, eon, era. And I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye, darlings.